All right, let's see if we can get a scope down these cylinders and see what they look like. All right, now I'm gonna check for spark on cylinder number one. Keep your eye right there. The uh, firing order on this tractor is one, two, four, three. So this is one. Next one in line to fire would be this one. This is two. Next one in line to fire will be four. And the last will be number three. Let me go check the gap and uh, put this on the antique spark plug tester, see what we get. Well, look what I found here on spark plug number one. Look at that some reason this got bent down and sort of off to the side so there's no way that one was going to fire What's a little bit strange to me is that this ignition switch button right here uh, out on all my other stuff is usually on and in is off. But this one appears to be the opposite. In appears to be the ignition run position and out appears to be off because I was not getting any spark with it pulled out. Okay, I've got an external uh, battery hooked up to the system here. My goal with this is just to see if the starter works and how the engine sounds when it cranks over. And if it does crank over smoothly and sounds okay, we'll do a compression test on it. Let's pull it out so we do not get any spark here when we uh, try to rotate the engine. Well, it seems like I've been dealing with a lot of starters lately. All right, now I'm gonna drain the gas tank, uh, flush it out, clean the sediment bowl, and also uh, remove the carburetor and clean it. Then we'll just drain the gas tank right out of the bottom here. There is more gas in this tank than I thought there was. Check this out. It's just about there. So I'm gonna try my fancy siphon thing here. Try this way first. When you get down to the bottom, you just pump it a little bit and it creates quite a suction to get the rest out of there. Well, I'm, I'm still screwing around with the gas tank, but I might as well get this carburetor removed and get it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. That way you can be doing two things at once. The choke rod is already loose because I pulled it up by the steering wheel and it just came right out. 
So we just need to remove these two uh, bolts here and the throttle. There we go. This should pop out. All right. What? Well, this doesn't make sense to me. This is the uh, mechanism that the control rod from up by the steering wheel hooks onto. This is the tractor housing over here, carburetor facing backwards. You pull on the choke lever and it opens the choke. And then you push back on the lever and it closes the choke. That's totally opposite from what I think it should be. We have one that's missing here. I didn't notice that before, probably because it's the one closest to the inside of the tractor. Shoot, well, let's see if that's broken off or just missing. Oh man, am I glad I took this apart. I almost didn't because the float was working. Look at all that. And we'll have a look at the float as well. The adjustment looks pretty good. Needle's going up and down. That's good. Hopefully we'll just have to clean this up. Uh, this gasket's toast though. Man, look how brittle that is. Shoot. That's the main pickup tube right there. Normally, there would be a main jet adjuster down here somewhere. This is just the uh, drain for the bowl. See how nasty that is? Here's this uh, missing screw hole. And here it is on the base. Just packed with crud. See if it still has threads. Yeah, I think it does, but they're all packed full with uh, rust and dirt. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know a socket might have been easier. I can see through the center but the uh, little holes here on the side look like they're blocked. So that will go into the ultrasonic cleaner as well. What else? Uh, we're gonna dunk this whole bottom part in, pickup tube, drain plug, float. Here's the needle. It's got that shiny spot on it, but it's not, uh, indented it's all smooth there so i think that needle's just fine yeah he's pretty dirty also and the spring yeah the inside of the seat is a little tarnished but doesn't look terrible let's put this in the cleaner Get back to the gas tank. All right, it's already up to uh, 38 degrees Celsius right now. A lot of times I'll have it up to 50, but 38 should be sufficient. Let's do, well, we'll just leave it on 60 minutes and then come back and check. We don't have to let it go the whole hour. I haven't looked in here yet. Let's see what we got. It's got oil. See if I can see anything from the top down. You know, like blockages, wasps nest, that kind of a thing. I can see all the way down to the oil. See that? That goes all the way down to the bottom of the oil cup that we just took off. So that means that part is at least clear. 
Okay, I've got the carburetor and all the pieces out of the ultrasonic cleaner. The pickup tube uh, turned out great. You can see through the little holes on the side there now. And of course, the middle is still clear. Sediment bowl looks brand new. The screen and gasket are reusable, but we do have a couple issues here. Issue number one, which is not a huge deal. I mentioned it earlier. So this is facing back towards the uh, rear of the tractor. And you pull the choke rod and it opens the choke. Well, that's opposite of how it should be. It should be when you pull the choke rod, it closes the choke. But the larger issue is right there. Can you see that choke plate is supposed to have two screws in it and it's missing one and it is loose. So when you try to turn it, it kind of binds up on the wall because that plate keeps slipping back and forth. So I need to fix that somehow. Let me look around in my parts and see if I can come up with something. Well, it lucked out on this one. I found the shell of an old Farmall Cub uh, bottom half of a carburetor. So I took the plate out of it and took the screws out and they actually fit in this carburetor. So that was a big win. So let me get this swapped out now and get it going in the right direction. All right, we got it in the uh, correct position now. So when you pull the choke rod, it actually closes the choke. And then you push it back and it opens it again. I think it's supposed to have one of those little spring deals in that hole, like, uh, like this. But I don't have one of those, so we're gonna go without that. All right, let's put this thing back together. And you might notice there's two shiny screws in here, not just the one. After I replaced, you know, the one, I checked the other one for tightness and it was totally loose and stripped out. So I used the other screw from the Farmall Cub carburetor in there and it fit perfectly and cinched down and tightened up. So got lucky on that. So the gasket that goes in between the housings here, that just disintegrated when I took it off. And I, I don't have a rebuild kit for this, so I'm just gonna use some uh, Forma gasket stuff. I really don't like using this on carburetors uh, for a couple of different reasons, but I'm gonna be careful with it and we'll make it work. All right, I've got the uh, float and the needle installed and the float and the needle are going up and down. So that should be good. So I think we're ready to put these two halves back together. And you know what? I forgot about that missing screw. Let me get one in here and I'll try to find another one. So I need one more like that. Twelve twenty-four. Before I spend an hour looking through that drawer, I'm going to see if one of these might be the same uh, size. This is a, also a Marvel Scheibler, I think, and this was just uh, it's an old sort of a dead carburetor off the uh, WD forty-five project. All right, so we need this to go into the 1224. All right, it's the same size. Well, apparently this carburetor only has one air fuel mix screw. And it's right on top here. We're gonna go all the way in and then back out one turn, half, one, ish try that well i forgot the fuel inlet so i got that uh, installed all right so put the uh, throttle control rod back on with the new cotter key and we're going to reuse the old gasket slide it into this boot kind of helps you hold it
All right, the carburetor is installed. Now I gotta replace this old uh, hard fuel line. We're gonna just use another rubber hose for now at least. Might switch to a hard line in the future. So I was in the process of uh, getting that hose clamp secured and I noticed that the whole sediment bowl top is loose. So I gotta take this fuel line back off. I still need to drain the fuel tank and then we gotta address this and put the fuel line back on. Okay, I finally got the gas tank flushed out and uh, got the sediment bowl cleaned and reinstalled. So let's go ahead and turn it on, see if we get any sediment and or leakage. It's still a little cloudy. Empty that bowl. I know I didn't get it on camera there, but there was a lot of dirt in this uh, gas tank. I mean a lot. That's better. All right, I'm just gonna leave the valve on now and we'll let fuel flow down to the carburetor and hopefully the float will be working and we won't have any leakage. Right, let me get a wrench and we'll crack the drain plug here and see if we've got any fuel coming out. So we should see some fuel dripping out of the bottom here to indicate that the carburetor is getting fuel from the gas tank. And if we do, that means we have fuel and the float is working. We do. Now I can't get the plug back in. All right, I'm gonna leave the fuel on while I'm cleaning up here, just to make sure that we don't get any uh, eventual leaks. And then we're gonna try to start this thing. Let me show you the difference in the switch here. The one on the right is a two wire switch. That is for a battery ignition. The one on the left is one wire. That's for a magneto ignition. So I ordered this one. I'll get it installed. And all you have to do is run one wire from this post to the magneto over here. Right there. And then when that's done, the out position will be run and the in position will be off. All right, I've got that new switch installed. That'll be run, that'll be off. So regarding this ammeter for a second, number one, they had it hooked up incorrectly. Number two, why is there an ammeter on this tractor at all when there isn't a generator? We've got magneto ignition, but there's no generator or alternator. So I'm not sure what the purpose of the ammeter was here. I, the only assumption I can make is they were, you know, they were going to install a generator or more likely an alternator because this is a 12 volt battery, but evidently they never got around to it. The only reason for the battery at all at this point is the starter and the starter doesn't work. So this is a, a hand crank magneto only tractor at this point. So let's go ahead and see if this thing will fire up for the first time and my possession probably the first time in a very long time all right we're in neutral got a fire extinguisher standing by i'm going to give it a couple cranks to choke it and then we'll turn the ignition on and see uh, what happens well i think i lost spark so I'll uh, get that uh, cap off of there and we'll inspect the points. It's got to be the problem. Yeah, I'm going to crank it over. We'll see if the points are opening and closing.
So I cleaned the points and reassembled the whole thing, got it back together. So we're gonna check if we have spark now in number one. There we go. All right, here we go. Well, this old girl's fighting me every step of the way here. We've got spark from the magneto, we've got fuel, we've got air, and it's still not starting. So before we dive into possible compression issues or maybe ignition timing, I'm just gonna change out all the spark plugs. So the old ones were Autolite 295, and uh, my local store didn't have that uh, model, so we're gonna try NGK B4 as a replacement. And uh, we're gonna throw those in and uh, try to start it again. And if it still doesn't pop off at all, then we'll start talking about compression and possibly timing. So the new spark plugs did not have any effect. I'm still not getting any sort of sign of life from the engine. I mean, that was kind of a long shot. I knew that going in, but it was worth a try and uh, the new plugs are gonna be good for it anyway, once I do get it running. So that leaves me with compression and ignition timing as possible reasons why the engine isn't running. Usually when your timing is uh, way off, you'll get some sign of life, like a backfire or a misfire. But I haven't gotten one single pop. So I went ahead and performed a compression test on all four cylinders. But because that starter isn't working, I had to hand crank the engine. And I'm just not sure that I can put any uh, value in my results because you really need an operational starter to do a proper compression test, in my opinion anyway. You need to crank each cylinder over, you know, maybe like five times to get a good reading. But at least I will have that as a baseline if I try it again in the future. Oh, and by the way, it, those compression readings were very low. Uh, number one was 30, number two was 30, number three was about 50, and number four is about 50. The service manual says each cylinder should be about 115. So I may have exceptionally low compression and that might be the reason it's not starting again not sure if i can put much value in those readings with just you know using the hand cranks to stay on the compression subject for a minute things this could be um, since the tractor has been sitting around so long without being run uh, it could be stuck rings um, another thing it could be is it just could simply need a valve adjustment. Um, the other thing regarding the valves is the valves could be exceptionally dirty. They could have carbon buildup and they might not be seating correctly and um, we could be losing compression there. So anything regarding the valves on this tractor, it's gonna be kind of a hassle because you have to remove the hood and the gas tank, the exhaust stack. Because this is an overhead valve engine, the valve cover, I mean, it goes way up to here roughly so this whole thing has to come off once it's off then it's you know simple to pop the valve cover off and inspect the valve train and adjust the valves and things like that but i would usually like to try the simplest option first uh, before i really start digging in and in my opinion the simplest option here is to put some oil down each cylinder and i, I think i'll use some uh Marvel Mr. Oil, and I'm not talking about just a few squirts, I'm talking about a significant amount in each cylinder, and then letting the tractor sit for two or three days and really getting a good soak in there. If the cylinder soak uh, doesn't accomplish anything, then at that point, I'll remove the uh, hood and gas tank and uh, start digging into the valves. At least the upper valve train will inspect that, see if they're in proper adjustment, first of all. 
you know, make sure we don't have a broken valve or a stuck valve. So again, I'm gonna try the soak first, see if the rings might be stuck. If not, then we'll go for the valves. If that doesn't do anything, then uh, we'll take a look at the uh, timing. But at this point, I need to inspect all that stuff anyway, so it really doesn't matter too much what order I do it in. But I prefer to end these videos on a positive note if I can, but this one's just gonna take some more work. And it's kind of ironic in a way because judging by the exterior of this tractor and the, the professional paint job it's got and everything else, I thought this was gonna be one of the easier tractors I've ever had to deal with. But at this point, it's looking like it might be one of the hardest. If you have any other suggestions that I haven't thought of already, please leave a comment. So with that, I'll sign off and I uh, hope you'll join me on the next video and we'll get this thing figured out one way or another.